Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome to part 5 of my networking tutorial series. As always, if you haven't watched the previous videos, make sure to check them out first. In this episode, we'll just make sure we handle disconnections properly so it'll be quite a bit shorter than usual. If you run into issues along the way, make sure to check out my Discord server as well as the code on GitHub. There's links to both of those in the description. Before we jump into it, I just want to update you guys on what I said in part 3 of this series about potentially needing additional checks to validate incoming UDP data on the server before handling it. I did some more testing and it does seem to work completely fine. All extra if statements I added were never executed so they appear to be unnecessary. However, as I said in that video, I've worked with TCP a lot longer than I have with UDP and it's possible that edge cases exist which I simply haven't run into. So if you find a flaw in the way we receive UDP data on the server, please get in touch with me either in the comments or on Discord. Anyways, we'll start by handling disconnections on the server. In the server's TCP class, create a new method called disconnect. Inside, we'll close our socket and then set the stream, receive data, receive buffer, and socket fields to null. Now head down to the UDP class and create a disconnect method. Inside, simply set the endpoint field to null. At the very end of the client class, add another disconnect method. This is the last one, I promise. In this one, we'll send a message to the console to let us know a player has disconnected. Then we'll set the player field to null and call the TCP and UDP classes disconnect methods. Back in the TCP classes receive callback method, we need to replace these to do comments. Instead, we'll call the appropriate client's disconnect method, which will disconnect both the TCP and UDP connections. And that's already pretty much it for the server side. Now on the client side, open up the client class. Near the top, add an isConnected boolean. In my tests, disconnecting seemed to work slightly differently on the client compared to the server, and this boolean will help us adjust for that. Next, add an onApplicationQuit method. For some reason, the Unity editor doesn't properly close open connections when you leave play mode, at least not until you re-enter play mode. We can use this method to get around that. Inside, we'll simply call the disconnect method, which we haven't created yet. Head down to the bottom of the client class and add this method. Inside, we'll check if the client is connected, in which case we'll set is connected to false before closing both the TCP and UDP sockets. At the end, we'll add a debug.log to let us know that we've disconnected. In the TCP class, add a disconnect method. Inside, call the client class's disconnect method and then set the stream, receive data, receive buffer, and socket fields to null. In the TCP class's receive callback methods catch block, call the TCP class's disconnect method and call the client class's disconnect method in the try blocks if statement. As you might expect, we'll set up a similar disconnect method in the UDP class. Inside, call the client class's disconnect method before setting the endpoint and socket fields to null. In the try blocks if statement in the UDP class's receive callback method, call the client class's disconnect method and call the UDP class's disconnect method in the catch block. All of this will make sure that when the client disconnects, the sockets are closed properly and everything gets cleaned up. In order for that to work properly though, we need to make sure to actually set is connected to true at some point. We'll do that in the client class's connect to server method. To test this out, start the server, hit play in Unity, and click the connect button. When you exit play mode, you should see a message in both consoles. Do this again, but this time stop the server before leaving play mode. As you can see, the client still disconnects properly. You'll notice that if we run everything again, this time disconnecting the client and then reconnecting it, there's still no errors. This means that once a player disconnects, the slot he had assigned to him gets reset properly, so that other players can take that slot and play. And with that, our networking solution is complete. There's obviously a lot of things related to network architecture that we haven't touched, such as lag compensation, but you now have all the necessary code to connect clients to a dedicated server, to send messages using TCP or UDP, and to properly disconnect clients. As for the future of this series, I'm still undecided about whether I'll continue it. These tutorial videos take me quite a long time to produce, definitely a lot longer than my devlogs, and I've now covered the fundamentals of networking. Most additional features which I could add and make videos about at this point will only apply to a subset of those of you watching these tutorials. Not all games require server rollback architecture and lag compensation. Even server-side physics is something only certain types of games need. A game like League of Legends could be built without it. Because of this, I'm a little unsure whether additional videos are worth the time and effort to create them, however if a certain topic is in high demand, I'll consider it. If you guys have any suggestions regarding which direction I could take this series in, make sure to let me know in the comments. I've been considering moving the server code into Unity, as that would be a comparatively easy way of eliminating the need for an external physics library. 
This would allow me to cover some more basic concepts like proper player movement, collisions, and potentially server-side AI in the context of multiplayer. As you can probably tell, this is all still very much up in the air, so I would greatly appreciate some input down below. If you found this video helpful, please take a moment to smash the like button. Also, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you always know when I upload another video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.